Hi everybody, it's Sam here. Thank you for watching today. So I've got another nice Easter project for you. This is a Easter egg gift box. You can see on the sides there, I've got this fluffy little handle, which is kind of meant to like represent the bunny's tail. I've got a little bunny down here, little tag you can write your message on, and it's the same on the back there as well. Really easy to make, so let me show you how. Okay, so I just wanted to show you where the inspirations come from. So I picked up this one here, and you'll see that box. But I, it was a kinder egg inside here and I just wanted the egg to go in my Easter basket which I made about a week ago and I'll link that up here. So that's gone into something and then I had the packaging and I thought, oh, that's quite cool. I'm sure, you know, I could recreate that. And then I had these two which have these eggs inside and they just have gold wrap on them. So this is the Maltesers. Now these were a pound each or maybe that one was £1.50, this one was a pound. Either way they're the same size egg and I thought these boxes are, are fine but they're just a bit boring and um, not very, um, not really eastery to be honest even though they've got the eggs on the front. So I decided to pop the eggs inside. So they are just slightly coloured, different coloured um, foil. This one's a little bit shorter, tiny, tiny bit. I'll give you the measurement for that in a minute. But if you're in the UK, I picked these up from Lidl. Sorry, no, Aldi. Like I said, that one was 99p and I think that one was £1.50. But considering there's quite a difference in those boxes, you can see there, there's actually a very, very small difference in the chocolate egg inside. So if you do want to make your own, the rough kind of width of this is about three just over three inches I'd say three and a quarter by um, five inches but that one's a little bit taller so I'd even go maybe five and a half and it will still fit in the box that I'm going to show you today so that's the size and it just turns that that was 99p or maybe 150 but it turns it into a really really lovely gift so that's all of the boxes and everything and like I said where the inspiration come from these are the handles that I'm using, they're little wired, I guess they're kind of like the pipe cleaners but these ones are fluffy, I got them last year from the works I believe but you know any anything for the handles. Okay so the papers I'm using again are from the Lisa Horton Crafts magazine, I've been using this a lot and then all the dies there, we'll talk through that once we get to that part. So you're going to want two pieces of cardstock, I've made sure I've done the measurements so that you'll be able to use your letter paper size or your A4. So you'll want one piece that's 10 and 3 quarters by 8 and a quarter. Along the 8 and a quarter side you want to score at 5 and 8 and then pop it on the long side and you want to score at 3, 9 and a half and 9 and 3 quarters. Okay, that piece is going to be for the back and then this piece is going to be for the front and this is 9 and a half by 8 and a quarter and it's along the eight and a quarter side that you want to score at five and eight. And then along that longer side, you want to score at three. Okay, to decorate the front and the back, you will also want two pieces of pattern paper. So this is that gorgeous plaid design, which I've used. Again, it's all inside, it's all attached. If anybody's new to my channel, so that I've just taken them all from inside the magazine here. You can see, I mean I've used a lot, but you get toppers there as well. I'm going to use that one on another project. I think that's my last project actually that I'm doing. So, and you also get all these bits as well. You get your little enamel pearls or dots, you get your stamp, you get an embossing folder. There's dies there as well that all comes with that magazine. So you want two pieces and these are four and three quarters by six and a quarter. Okay, And then the tag and the ovals will go through in a moment. So that's all the scoring done. Okay, so now we want to stick our pattern paper down because it's easier to die cut it when this is all attached. So I'm just going to pop each one in its rectangle there. And then when I've stuck this one down, again, if I just fold those, you've got your two score lines at the top. See, I've got them both folded over like so. So make sure you've got them folded over and then you're sticking that within that back rectangle there. This is one of the few kind of boxes where you actually are focusing on both sides because usually you don't really take no notice of the back but with this one you do have both. And okay whilst that's drying I'm actually going to score the other score lines into this. So within this side section again ignoring your little thin tab there 
you will have a three inch width here. I'm just going to pop a little indent at one and a half and then you just want to, from that one and a half, you just want to lie, just line up your ruler down to the bottom corner of that, that rectangle side. So that one and then again pop your stylus down first and then your ruler and that way you'll get it point to point and you're just marking a triangular shape you see there there we go from that middle one and a half of this side piece down to the corner and then again down to that corner there again don't burnish them right now because you're just going to flatten it if you are running it through your dye machine we'll do that after if not then obviously burnish them but you just want to do the same on this one here as well just this time you're going to be you know working along this score line here all right i mean we do trim it away but you can get this all in place now okay so now that's all stuck down so i've got here my card making magic these are the A5 oval dies. They've been out of stock for a long time, but hopefully they are coming back in and I will link them below because I use them all the time. They're such a nice set. So with this one here, this measures, you're looking at two by four and a half. Now, if you, you will need a larger die cutting machine because obviously the width of this is eight and a quarter, so you'll need your A4. But if you don't have a die cut machine, Find something to draw around that's similar size. It could be a square if you want. It could be a circle. And you want to place it within this section here. Now I'm bringing mine down so it's about three quarters of up from the bottom there. And just make sure it's, you know, equal amount both sides there. So I'm going to go with, a, I think about there. Now, if you don't have a die machine, you want to draw around this and then cut it by hand. Okay. You could also add you could cut around, you could die cut the paper on its own, lay the paper down on the cardstock and draw around, but don't stick the paper down, draw, just draw around it, then cut the cardstock and then stick this over the top. So that's another way to do it as well. So there are, you know, other options. So I'm going to just tack this in place and run it through my machine. Okay, so they've all been cut now, so I'm just going to fold and burnish all the score lines, including that little tab. And then with these ones here, you just want to make both of those score lines a valley fold. So I'm just going to pinch that all together and again that side. We're going to cut a few bits away in a minute, but can you see now that both valley folds and they go inside? You can see you get the side of that coming together. And then we just need to snip away. So at the bottom here, we're going to cut up that score line like so. And we're going to fold that under and then just take a nice wedge off of each corner. And again, with this one, you're then going to end up coming right up and you're going to remove this piece, cut it on a little angle like so and on a little angle there and now we've got our tab that we will attach inside okay so that's how the front piece should look and you're going to do exactly the same with the back so burnish all the sides okay so again we're going to cut up that bottom score line fold it under cut away a chunk from each side And then when you get to here, where the top of your triangle is, that scored one, you want to cut along that line that runs that it, it runs from, so all the way across to the first score line. So if I fold that under, so you just focus it so you can see you've got the, the score line there, you just want to then take that away completely, like so. There's them. Fold again, do your valley folds on both of those pieces, okay, like so. We'll bring the base up, and then you'll see that that will come over, and that's then going to be over the front of the card, okay. Now, I've also cut some frames, I'm going to stick these down before I stick everything else together, I just find it a bit easier. So, to make these frames, I've used the original oval that I cut with, so that two by 
whatever size it was that I said, um, four and a half. And I then went up, I think it was two, yeah, I think I went up two sizes this time. Usually I do a thin frame, but I thought this time I'll do a thicker one. So I think, yeah, it must have been, yeah. So if you do have this set, I cut originally with the fourth smallest and then I've used the sixth smallest with it. But again, the measurements of this one are five and a half by three. So it just gives you an idea. And you just want to pop them together like so and then pop some washi tape to hold them in place and then run that through your machine in your chosen colour and you'll get your frames and then it will just sit perfectly over the original aperture and just give you that nice frame. So I'm going to get those stuck down. Okay, so they're all stuck down and now I just want to add, if you want to add a handle like I have, I've actually hole punched in the middle of this very thin top piece here. So I'm just going to mark, I'm going to flip it over and just inside here, just put a little dot at two and a half inches in the middle of that section there. And then I'm just going to use my punch here and just punch that hole. Now if you'd rather have two side by sides, you can weave through some ribbon that way. I actually just stuffed this handle into there and put a little bit of hot glue on the end and that was fine. It's not, you know, it's only going to be carried for a matter of minutes really. So now you'll see we've got that already. Next we can start assembling it all together. So I'm just going to use my glue all down that tab there. And then you're just going to lay this and always focus on the base score line. You can always fix the top if it's slightly out, but you can't fix the bottom. Otherwise you'll have a wobbly rocking kind of gift box or bag. So just make sure that base score line is nice and lined up. Just give that a minute to dry. Okay, then fold the whole thing over, fold the other side down and just pop your glue again along the side. I would usually use my low tack Cosmic Shimmer glue for the tabs, but I'm waiting for my order to arrive today, so <laughs> that's why I'm using the Kalau. But the Kalau still works, you just have to give it a few more minutes. Okay, so now you can see our box. So when you pinch in the sides, you'll see that piece will fold over with your little, if you have got that hole, that'll be on the top, like so. Okay, so now I'm going to keep it kind of in that shape. So this is the front, so I'm going to fold the back down first. I'm going to add my glue all on the back, pop that one down and then the other side and then that one. And then you just pop it over, you can go in there with your hand and just push that down, make sure it's all secure. Okay, next you want to add your egg. So I have used some of my foam tape and I want to make sure that the back kind of join is on the side so you get a nice front and back. So if you can see the foils just joined there, I'm going to have it so it's on this left hand side. So I'm just going to pop some of my foam tape. I'm going to pop two layers. Pop it in. And then just push that down. So you can see this is one slightly shorter, but by the time you close the box, it doesn't matter. See, it all holds itself in place. It looks really cool. So that's there. It might wobble side to side, but it isn't going to come out. You might want to put some more treats because in some of the Easter eggs, you get smaller little chocolates that complement the chocolate brand that it is. So you could easily pop some other bits and pieces down inside there because you can see you don't lose any of your base kind of area. It's only when you get to the top that it obviously all comes in on itself. All that's left to do now is decorate. So I've got my little wooden bunnies. I can't remember where these are from. They've got little um, foam pads on the back of them. I think, again, I'm going to say the works. So I remember I did get a lot of Easter stuff last year. I've not actually brought any Easter things. I just, that magazine, which is spring really, rather than Easter. Because um, obviously nobody's really going out and I haven't really shopped online. And because I had so much left over, I just thought I would, you know, carry on using that. So I'm going to stick him down the bottom. And that's, it was using these that then reminded me of this. And then I thought I oh, would we'll do a little bit of a, a bunny kind of, um, you know, tail, I guess. You could put bunny ears on this 
if you look at my little um, Pekin Bunny Easter card, you could have Bunny's ears coming out the back of this here and turn this into the face or something, you know, there's, there's lots of ways to do this. So next I'm going to just, let's just roughly measure what I had there because I can keep that for another time. So just take off any of the excess and then I just popped one end through and just folded the metal or ribbon if it's ribbon you've got and just fold it to one side. I'm going to pop some hot glue under that and then with this one here just going to snip a little bit off the end just so I can take some of the excess away and again should have gone that way actually there we go pop that little bit of metal through okay so there's a tiny bit of hot glue underneath that but now it means that when you stick this down I'm going to use some velcro you get your little handle that's really cute so for the velcro I've just got these little 10 mil velcro dots I'm just going to take a couple of them I mean you could put a velcro close um, you could put a magnetic closure on this if you wanted to um, you could punch holes through here as well and feed your ribbon through you could just add a peg you could not have this back piece just cut two pieces that were this size and when it squeezes together there pop a peg but I'm just going to bring it down so that front score line is along the top of the front piece that way you know you've got your little gap and just pinch those together like so okay so now that works really well and then my tag is using this set here which was given to me a long time ago it was in a friend mail um, thing that I had this these ones are from hobby base I think they might still have those available on their site but I like these ones they've got the little slots that you can cut out and then I've just cut this piece of cardstock and heat embossed my happy Easter and I've taken that from the apple blossom springtime sentiments so I'm now just going to tie it around the handle and then make a little bow though and then I'm not going to be writing on the back of mine because I'm giving them to the people so they're going to know it's from me but I'm just popping a bit of glue just there and then I'm going to position my tag so it just sits off on an angle there just think it looks a bit nicer on an angle like that and you could obviously put your pattern paper on there as well if you want to cover that white space but I think it breaks up all the pattern and everything else that's going on. There you have it two really fun very pretty Easter egg boxes I think they look so much better than the boxes that they come in and I can't wait to give these to my family. If you are new to my channel and you want to make some Easter projects I have a whole playlist from the last three to four years of Easter projects that I've made so check that out it will be coming up now. I'll also share below some other Easter egg kind of packaging so I did make another box probably two years ago which was another Easter egg one and it was kind of like a lift flip lid kind of thing and you might enjoy that one as well but uh, yeah hope you like this one today if you haven't subscribed please do so and hit the notification bell and that way you'll be notified every time I upload a new tutorial. I'll be back again very soon. See you then. Bye.